This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is Windows 10. This is the final version here. Those of us who were in the Windows Insider program got to try it out early, and we are getting the final build about two weeks before the rest of the world will be able to get it on July 29th. Now, we've looked at Windows 10 a couple of times, and it's changed a lot since then. The last time we did was January of 2015, and it was still very much a work in progress, and the UI wasn't even finalized. Now, everything you see here is the exact shipping build. Of course, there's always going to be driver updates and tweaks and security fixes and stuff like that, but what you see here has no watermark on the desktop. It's complete, and we're going to look at it now. So finally, Windows 10, the full release version. Notice there is no watermark down here in the corner to say pre-release build. The Windows Insiders were given the release a couple of weeks early ahead of everybody else, and that's what we've got right here. And this is the HP Spectre X360, a very lovely Windows Ultrabook, 13.3 inch. This one happens to have a 1920 by 1080 display. It's also available with a higher resolution display on it. And it's your typical Ultrabook with the ULV Ultrabook dual core, dual core CPU. 8 gigs of RAM inside an SSD drive. So it's it's not some super duper high powered machine, but it's a very nice Ultrabook to give you an idea. Now Windows 10, much like Windows 8 and 8.1, were designed to run even on lower end hardware. Well, because Microsoft was making the push into tablets like Intel Atom tablets, the lower powered ones, the Dell Venue Pros, those sort of thing. I don't mean Surface Pro 3, which is as powerful as an Ultrabook. So it, the same is true here with Windows 10. It's not a resource hog. This is not Windows Vista all over again where it's going to really tank your machine. In fact, some people are saying this isn't the greatest thing in the world for Intel because, number one, the OS is free. You don't have to buy a new PC to get it or something like that, and it runs just fine on existing hardware. So all the UI is final here. Everything is final here, of course. You know, over time, there's going to be the usual software fixes, antivirus updates, all that sort of thing that you get with Windows. But everything is set in stone that you see here now. And one thing that's important is you can set this to run in tablet mode if you want. And if you have a tablet, primarily, you're probably going to do that. And if you have a convertible like this, you probably want to run it in desktop mode because this is the return to desktop. You can get back the full screen of live tiles if you want, but primarily that's not the idea behind Windows 10 unless you are running something that is just solely a tablet with no keyboard attached. So we have the familiar Windows desktop and we have a couple of different programs down here. You can see the icons. For example, here's the new Xbox app right there. I'm just using the pen because it's the easiest way to do it. Obviously, the operating system supports the pen just fine. So all of our Metro apps, Live Tile apps, Windows Store apps, whatever you want to call them, now are in floatable, resizable windows, just like your regular desktop program windows, which is less jarring for a lot of people. So you don't have to switch between two different environments, the full screen live tile environment and your desktop, which is nice. And Microsoft hopes that this will increase the adoption of folks using the live tile apps. And the Xbox apps is here and it's pretty darn cool. And notice the hamburger menu up here. This is how you bring up all sorts of settings. And that's pervasive throughout the operating system. All sorts of things have the hamburger menu. You've got your search, you've got context aware of things like adding a friend and so on right there. And we have the new Groove Music down here as well, which is the renamed Xbox Music. So Groove Music is, well, the music player that, that we've come to know and I don't know if I'd say love but as Xbox Music, but it's grown up some. And one important thing now is it works with OneDrive storage. So sort of like Google having the ability so you can upload your own music and then stream it anywhere that you log in with your Google account for for Groove here and, and OneDrive, what happens is you upload your music and it's available to any place you log into your Microsoft accounts, and that's pretty cool too. And again, it's a floating window. You have playback controls down here at the bottom. Gets the job done, included with the operating system. Now, Windows Media Center is gone. That's one, one of the few things that is completely gone that you might have actually used from previous versions of Windows. So if you're using that for DVD playback, Microsoft says they're going to have a standalone app just for DVD playback. So it's not the end of the world. Plus, there's plenty of DVD players on the market. Down here in our little taskbar, we have some familiar things, our Wi-Fi icon. We have the notification. And here we have all sorts of things that it wants us to know about. You can have the email notifications here, and this is supposed to work across your devices and hopefully sync up to, obviously not ones that are particularly related to this device, like the fact that we just did a software update, but if you have news or any other email, that sort of thing. And you've got your tiles over here, quick switch to tablet mode, brightness, airplane mode, and you can get to all settings. Now we still have that kind of dualistic thing going on here. You go to all settings, 
here we have something that can also run in full screen mode if you're using this as a tablet. So this is sort of like the grown up version of what we had with Windows 8.1. If you go to devices, it's going to look familiar. It looks a lot like the Windows 8.1 device manager. And we still have the traditional Windows control panels right here on the desktop. I have a shortcut to control panels. And there's the regular old control panels. Right now we have our desktop scaling set to 100%, which is really no scaling since this is a 1080p display. I think that that is pretty fine. Windows has handled scaling Windows itself pretty well. It's always been the problem with third-party applications that may or may not handle and respect Windows DPI scaling. So that's a problem that is not necessarily fixed in Windows 10 because it's up to each application maker to do it. For example, Adobe did it with the Adobe CC, the latest version of the Adobe Suite, Photoshop, and all that sort of stuff. But for older versions of Adobe, there is no scaling on option for the tools around the edge still. So for if you're using older versions of Photoshop, for example, like 5 or 6, you might still notice that your tools are kind of tiny. If you go for like a 4K display or something like that on a small laptop, typography and all that sort of thing is excellent. So Microsoft does a good job. This right here is the Microsoft Edge web browser, which used to be called Project Spartan. You still have regular IE here. Don't have a panic if you actually liked IE. I know there's two of you out there maybe who did. Uh, of course, you can install Chrome or anything else you want here. But what's new about Edge is it's supposed to be quick, lightweight, clean in terms of the UI, and it has the annotation mode. So you just tap right over there. So you can use the highlighter here if you want to circle something that you can use your finger. It doesn't have to be the pen since I have a pen that's pretty handy. And then say I want to make a note like right here. And then you can choose to save it or share it if you want. If you choose save, and oh, you can type text notes by the way too on a web page. And you can save it to OneNote. You know, there's a free version of OneNote that you can get, so that works with that. You can save it to your favorites or you can save it to your reading list that way. Or if you just say, no, I just want to share it instead, you can go ahead and share it to mail, OneNote, Fresh Paint, anything that is appropriate. Tabbed browser. It's pretty quick. This used to be the weakest link. Oh, like three months ago or so, Spartan was crashing on me a lot. Now, in the last month, Microsoft has tightened things up really quickly here, and it works very reliably as the now called Edge browser. Another feature, this start menu is back. This is something that, well, that people have been pretty excited about right here. And you can see it's it's live tile based to a certain extent. That which you use most often you can put here or you can customize anything you don't want. Press and hold and you can unpin it. You can add things over here or you can use the list. And it shows you what you've used most recently right here. And you can hit the all apps button to see a list of all your programs. So for those of you who like that comfort of the start menu, indeed it's back and we have the power Back over here, it's not up in the corner anymore. It is right there, and you can shut down, restart, and so on. So all the way, all I'd say is pretty livable, and it's kind of like if you're going between Windows 7, it's like Windows 7.5 in terms of UI. It's not as jarring as Windows 8 initially was. Other things work pretty much like you're used to. Like here we have our little power icon down here, and we've got quick shortcuts, which is handy, to battery saver, and to the brightness. And power and sleep settings looks not so different from what we've seen in Windows 8.1. And there we have access to our power settings. And if you want additional power settings, this is the one that you used to from Windows 7, for example. Now we're in the Windows Store from the world of Metro right here. And they don't even have icons yet. But notice there's some new things. Excel Mobile, Word Mobile, PowerPoint Mobile. These are free applications. And Microsoft's doing this thing called universal applications, or making it available to developers too. And that means the same program can run on your, your laptop, your desktop, your tablet. Now the tablet's not a surprise. Most of those are x86 compatible Intel Atom tablets anywhere, sometimes even Core i3 and Core i5, and also Windows Phone. Now obviously you're not going to see super heavyweight killer things like full Photoshop ever here because that's not possible or practical on a phone. And Adobe's not going to be able to do that sort of thing. But Let's take a look at Word Mobile and compare it to regular Word as you know it. So here it is, more simplified, more finger friendly. See the finger in scale to these controls right here. Pretty easy to use. You got your basics right there. When you hit insert, you get a ribbon that has all the common things instead of unmanageable finger wise drop down menus. 
So that's available to you. So there it is, the free office tools that are part of Windows 10. Now how about those of you who do have convertible devices like this, or perhaps even in a tablet? Now what's going to happen when I flip this? Now uh, it's going to take some driver updates probably for some of the models out there. The, the Spectre X360 happens to be well, sort of the poster child for Windows 10 development because Microsoft actually gave it away at the developer conference to encourage folks to develop for this. But driver updates will come before Windows 10 is deployed and probably there'll be some after the fact again too. But by the way, it does, it's not a big change in the driver model. So this isn't going to be a headache. Your printer driver is going to continue your work, all that sort of thing. That part's good. So you're probably going to get some power management firmware updates, some display updates, stuff like that to handle everything. But right here, it's working pretty well. So say we want to switch this into presentation mode or tablet mode. We're going to put it in presentation mode. I've set it to ask me before switching into the big live tile mode. And here we have it, what you remember from Windows 8 and 8.1. So we have the live tile environment. So that is still right here and available. We can't scroll right now because, well, that this is all the tiles that I have assigned, so you, you get the idea of what that's like. And if you want to get back to the desktop, you can do so. And you still have your little taskbar down here, which is pretty darn handy, and you still have your start menu, and access to power is now right there. I know these things are kind of tiny. And lastly, of course, there's a lot of things to cover here, but just to, to cover the most important points, we put it back in laptop mode and asked me if I want to switch back into standard desktop mode. I said yes, obviously. There is Cortana and the new search. Now, Microsoft is, of course, hoping that you don't have to run to Google all the time for search. So here, you can type in anything you want, any sort of query, and it's also sort of like Google Now stuff, giving you updates about things that it knows you care about. So I've started typing in capital of and FR, I was going to say France. So you get an auto, bunch of autocomplete possibilities right here and say, I want to know, yes, what's the capital of France, believe it or not. Simple question. And there you go. It's a Bing search result. No surprise there. But, you know, Bing is not that hideous either, especially for basic searches like that. What if you rather talk? We have Cortana here now. Now Cortana is responsible for those cute little uh, informational things as well. So if you want to speak to Cortana, instead we have a microphone symbol. What's the capital of Kansas? Topeka. So we don't even have to see Bing in that case. She's just going to give you answers when it's something that's pretty simple like that. Who won the last Red Sox game? And in that case, she will give us a Bing result. And sorry, Yankee fans, but good times there. For this particular unit, and again, this is, it was one of, one of the target development systems for Windows 10, so this may be a best possible case. But in general, I have to say that battery life has been just fine with this. It wasn't that way four months ago. It was draining the battery and all that sort of thing. Heat and noise was higher, but that's typical with Windows pre-releases. Once you get towards the end, things improve. So for you and your machine, I would suggest that you go and check your manufacturer's website or their update facility before you go to Windows 10 and do the upgrade and look to see what driver updates, firmware updates are available first. Now Windows 10 is going to handle a lot of those driver updates, prerequisite ones like there's a new audio driver, a new display driver, that sort of thing. It will do it for you. It's a chunky download. It's probably going to be two or three gigs. So depending on your internet connection, keep that in mind. You know, you can have it running in the background while it works on downloading that. And the upgrade on a machine with an SSD like this didn't take that long. It took actually about 20 minutes or so, 25, which is pretty impressive. And I have to say I had no data loss, no problems. I've been using this as a production machine even in the older and iffier builds of Windows 10. And I've been using Photoshop on here, Lightroom, MS Office, all the usual stuff. It works. So my take on is Go for it. Update your drivers first. Update your firmware if it's available, but it's free. It's fast. It's got a nice, friendly UI here. For those of you who never like the dualistic, completely separate metro environment from this, you don't have to have that anymore. You can stick primarily in the friendly desktop thing. Still have the advantage of the live tile apps. They float in Windows. They're not going to be jarring. You don't have to swipe back and forth anymore to see them. By the way, switching between running applications, whether they're live tile or desktop apps, is pretty easy. First, you have the little switcher over here. There's an icon down there. And then you have your usual Alt-Tab way of switching between things as well. So it's good. It's free. 
Go get it. So that's Windows 10 coming to your PC soon if you like. In fact, Microsoft's already sending out little invitations so it can preload some of the files if you want to upgrade starting on July 29th again. And it is free if you have a legal copy of Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1 installed. You can get a free of charge for the first year. Such a deal, right? I, I think most people are going to like it. I say go for it, definitely. And now you, we didn't really have many problems with upgrading. And I did this from early on on the HP Spectre X360 when things were still not really quite so stable. And it's worked out quite well, honestly. You might see a few live tiles that are wonky that you can delete, stuff like that. But the driver model staying the same. So it's a very stable and enjoyable operating system. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.